How we start take this two. again? Yeah, <laughs> take two. <laughs> it's always awkward in the beginning. Anyway, so we got Patrick Voigt on Flight Tales today, not related to John Voigt. Angelina Jolie is not his cousin. On Flight Tales today, we got Patrick Voigt. Ooh. Ooh. There we go. <laughs> hey, you're a controller here in Lafayette. Yes. How long have you been here? Six and a half years. Six and a half years. Yep. So where are you from? I am from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Okay. There's not much in Tulsa, huh? I mean, there's, there's, there's some yeah. things. There's oh, some okay. things. It's a good medium-sized city. Yeah. yeah. Not yeah. as big as Oklahoma City, but still pretty, pretty good. I've been there. Couple times, nice Oklahoma City or Tulsa? Tulsa, Tulsa. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've flown in, flown in there. Dang, didn't yeah. have any fun. No, I I <laughs> don't even remember what I did over there. Exactly. <laughs> have I been to Tulsa before? Yeah. <laughs> How'd you end up becoming a uh, air traffic controller? Pretty much, I went to the University of Oklahoma in Norman, Oklahoma, another what? small town. Oh, they have an aviation. No, yeah, wait. yeah. Don't they, they have do. an aviation program? Yeah, they got yeah. an airport up there, Max Westheimer. And they do pilot school and stuff, airport management, and then they have a Air traffic control aside. Okay. And yeah, didn't know what I wanted to do in college. Went through freshman year, kind of like business undecided. And then I had a buddy. Hopping around to all Yeah, doing like yeah. Yeah, microeconomics, macroeconomics, biz calc, and just terrible classes. Yeah. <laughs> and then I had a buddy who was doing air traffic control. And he's like, you should take the intro class. And I took the intro class. You know, they sell you on the whole Reagan fired everyone. There's going to be oh, so many yeah. jobs. You know, it's going to be the job of the future. Yeah. Sounded interesting, unique. So I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll go with that. And then sophomore year, junior and senior year, I did that. So what does that entail? Like, so do they stick you in a room and you start doing like controlling? Kind of like, it's kind of like, I guess, kind of like flight school. You start in the classroom. It's uh, all book work. We're learning. And because all of us are like from scratch, we're like yeah. 19 year old kids, never flown a plane, never done air traffic control. I didn't know what air traffic control was yeah. when I started it. And so you do classroom stuff, you know, they're going over... You know, weight categories. You get the whole intro like thrust, drag, weight, lift, and oh, all you that. Get, like aerodynamics. Yeah. Like, okay. And then it's kind of like I think they modeled it after the Oklahoma City Academy because that's where yeah. we all go to like for three months for tower class, and then if you pass, you get to go to your facility. And it's kind of modeled after that. So I think they were teaching the classroom from that. And then we had a simulator for tower. Okay. So like I think twice a week we would go to this building off campus and it was just a warehouse and they had a simulator. Oh, cool. We do that. And then that was the tower portion. And then they also did radar. Mm -hmm. They had nice radar sims and stuff. And radar is a separate thing. Like mm -hmm. there's two, I guess, career paths and you don't really get to choose the, yeah. the agency chooses for you. But like everyone you've talked to here is terminal. Yeah. So we usually only go to towers, but you know, then there's the tower tray cons, the up downs, yeah. which we are. Yeah. I remember Nick talking about that, where he wanted to go to a place that had radar, mm -hmm. like the up down. Yep. Because he wanted to get that a little experience. bit of everything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then the other path is in route, which is the centers like Houston center, Dallas center, okay. uh, stuff like that, where you're only doing radar. And so I guess in school, we trained both of them. And then I graduated in 2013. I got picked up in 2017. So, you know, what, four years later, I'd yeah. forgotten everything and then oh. go to the academy. I'm like, oh, I've kind of done this before. Uh, yeah. But obviously a little it different. Back. Yeah. yeah, most of it came back. Yeah. But definitely had to relearn a lot of stuff. So you graduate in 2013 and I guess you had to apply, huh? I mean, how's yep. that work from after getting through school? So it's kind of the benefit of going through the CTI school, which is the Collegiate Training Initiative. <laughs> it was supposed to give you a leg up, but they changed it like right before we all graduated oh, a couple okay. of years and they made everyone equal. So I got in on my third try. So they usually do a bid once a year and it's only for like three days. They just did one uh, this month in April. So you apply to that and then you just wait. And then so like you got to take this dumb test called like the biographical assessment or something. It's yeah. just like 60 strongly agree, strongly disagree. And that's like the first hurdle. And if you pass that, then you go and take, it's called the ATSA, I think. And you go, it's just a bunch of mind games, like, I don't know, like proficiency stuff. So you do all that and then you get well qualified, qualified or, you know, needs improvement or something. So there's no pass or fail. It's just like. No, you're just getting like assessed and ranked and put in categories and then they start pulling from those categories. But yeah, and then they, they went back and they eventually changed it back to where CTI people get a leg up where you get oh, to okay. skip that biographical assessment. So I got pretty much to skip step one. I still go take the little mind game stuff, but yeah. that helped me out because the first two, I didn't make it very far. And then the third Needs time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they don't tell you what you get. Oh, I don't, don't think okay. so, but I hope I wasn't that. 
But at least the third time I wasn't because got through that. And then you go through the whole background check, uh, medical, and then you get your Oklahoma City date and then you go. Yeah. You get, you're there for three months. I think in route is four months, but for us it was three months. After they say you pass and hey, to report to yep. Oklahoma City, they decide at that moment, like you're going in route or yes. you're doing terminal. So, so they send you a tentative offer letter, a TOL, and it tells you what it is. And okay. some people are like, call HR and try to like negotiate. Cause like yeah. some people want terminal, some people want in route. Oh, okay. I think for me, it was just whatever I got yeah. I was happy with but I think some people like I've heard have called and they like if they needed in route people they'd let you switch but I think it's pretty firm yeah so you get yeah what you get and then you go and then once you pass the academy you have a little list of facilities where they need people how was your academy experience like since you've already went to the college yeah but four years removed so I felt like I was pretty much Brand just, new. Yeah, brand new. I was just kind of approaching it like that and learning everything I could. There was no like, I didn't feel entitled or anything. Yeah, like, yeah. I, like, I could I could fail here. Yeah. <laughs> so it was good. Yeah, like basics is like a month long and it's just like intro to aviation. Like we're doing the thrust, drag, lift, weight type stuff. You're learning the categories of planes, uh, like small, small plus, uh, large, heavy, super. So what is heavy? Because you hear that on the radio a lot. Like Ooh, heavy. I don't, oh. So there's certain. Do you know the right weights? I don't. I knew the small ones. It's like it was twelve five, so twelve thousand five hundred and below was a small, and then large. There's there's weights. Okay. I don't know off the top of my head. They're just weight classes for uh, certain things, wake turbulence and stuff. Was so like a lot of times you'll hear like in in route you'll hear heavy seven zero six five, and that's the type of airplane. Yep, you're required to say heavy. Or yes. you got to say it after the call sign. So like we have the UPS that comes in sometimes your FedEx to go to Acadiana, get painted, I guess, yeah. or maintenance. And every now and then they're a heavy and we always got to remember, cause we don't work a lot of heavies. You got to remember to say like FedEx 1270 heavy. Yeah. So they, that's why I was always wondering like what the heavy, where does that start? Because I don't know guys, weight wise, but it goes yeah. large Boeing 757 heavy <laughs> super. It's a unique plane. The Antonov. <laughs> Well, like oh, in a bet, Antonov used to come yeah. to New Iberia all the time. Really? Yeah. I, I went on a tour to Houston Intercontinental Tower and we were up there and they have like their own ramp for this plane because it's giant and they have to like, it goes and it sits on the runway for I think like seven minutes. So they have to like close this runway because it goes and sits. I don't know why. It's got to like spool up the engines or something. Oh. It just sits there and then, so they got to do a lot of coordination when they're like actually clearing them for takeoff. Yeah. They have one come into um, New Iberia a few times. And I think they were dropping off Bristow's helicopters. Oh, nice. It was a, yeah. So it's big enough to hold like an S-76 or something huge. Always like the, the super guppy with like the mouth. Yeah. You just stick other planes in there. Yeah. That's crazy. They used to have like a small plus category and that was only for like wake turbulence for an intersection departure. It was like three minutes. So even though they were oh. a small, you still had the three minute wake turbulence. It was like... <laughs> The acronym they gave us at the Academy was KFC Bud Light because it was King Air, <laughs> King Air, Falcon, Citation, Beach Jet, and Lear. Oh. And it's certain ones of those. So I think it's like the Citation 550. I think the 750 is too big. And then, yeah, King Air, Falcon, probably the smaller Falcon and stuff. But yeah, I mean, that was like six and a half years ago. Remember that one? Wow. So now, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. So you had to do the same stuff again. Um, it was that pretty you had much already learned. In, yeah. Okay. Because, like I said, I think they modeled it after that because it was taught by a controller or like a retired controller. So I guess the OU hired him to teach the class. Went through all that. So it was pretty much the academy, just you know, worse simulators and probably not as good of like a instruction. Oh. I mean, okay. it was a really good instruction. It was a really good program. I don't want to like, you know. Sorry, Steve, if you ever watch this. But no, I mean, I feel like it prepared me a good amount. But this thing that sucked was the four years in between. Yeah. Like I went kind of. I went to it for a whole different career kind of after that because I kept applying every year. But, you know, for four years, you got to find something to do. What'd you do in between? I went into oil and gas, kind of just lease and title management type stuff. Okay. So that was a cubicle job. Just worked for a like a land company and just read leases and got people paid, I guess. That didn't yeah. sound fun at no, all. No, it's not. It was <laughs> yeah, not good. And I'm very fun. happy the day that uh, the FAA <clears throat> emailed me and said... You know, you're going to Oklahoma City. Yeah. I told my bosses that day. I was like, hey, I'm going to leave in like a month. Because they don't give you a lot of time. They give you that little tentative offer letter. And it's like, hey, next month, you're going to Oklahoma City. 
So like, oh, so you got to pack up. And, yeah. Lucky and, for me, being in Tulsa, I was an hour, it's like an hour and a half away. Yeah, you're not too far. So it was very easy. But for the people like with families and like who live in like, you know, the Northeast and stuff, like, yeah, they got to pack up, move for three months. And then you're not even like guaranteed a job after three months. So they have the simulators for tower. Is it just like a room full of, I just imagine a room full of screens and yeah. you're kind of They're like sideways traffic. TVs, like vertical TVs. Okay. So like, yeah, it's just like, and it's kind of in like a, like an arc. Uh, but yeah, they're just sideways TVs and there's probably like six of them. I mean, it's not like a good looking, it's not photorealistic or anything. Oh. It's just <laughs> terrible graphics. And yeah, they're not terrible, but yeah, they're, it's not like you're actually looking. It's not like Microsoft Flight Sim yeah. where like you look at it and you're like, oh, this looks real. Yeah. It, it is game. It, it is, is game. Yeah. And then the planes never do what you want them to do. That was kind of like a similarity between college and the academy. Like you'll be talking, it's a robot. So oh. it's all voice recognition. So you're talking, the computer system does it and then it'll read it back like UPS 705, 28 left via alpha. But it got it wrong so often. It's still like talking to your phone, like talking to Siri. Yep. And, and it, it would in, misinterpret. And they weren't supposed to like, at the Academy, they're not supposed to like take off points for that, but it screws you up. Oh. Like it puts you on because you're already like stressed out because yeah. you you know, scored on all these. Luckily, I, I don't know if it was my voice or something. I didn't have too many problems. There were people like, you had to like say like, instead of Delta, uh, one girl had to say Delt. Oh. Because for some reason, whenever she said Delta, it would never register. So she was just, you know, taxi via oh, she Delta. she had to change the way she said yep. it just for the computer. Just to play the game. Yeah. yeah. And so like Alexander's job, you said it's an RPO. Mm -hmm. What Remote pilot operator. Yeah. So where do they fit in to so, the whole thing? For Tower, you pretty much walk in and you're with a classmate and yeah. you're working local, they're working ground or vice versa. Okay. And uh, the RPO just sits back at the computer to fix errors. So they're not actually like... Oh, I thought they were responding to you instead no. of the computer. Nope. They're only there to like fix the computer. So oh, okay. if the computer did something like egregious, they would be like, hey, I fixed it. Okay. But they're just there kind of monitoring. When we go back, because we're a tower radar, so we went to tower school, we graduated, we come here, we certify through the tower. They send us back to Oklahoma City for a month for RTF. Don't really know what that stands for. Radar terminal facility, maybe. I don't know. But you go and it's pretty much just a month long uh, class of radar sims okay. of like arrivals and departures and stuff. And so you do that. And when you're doing that, you're actually talking to an, a human being. So you get on that, you're on the headset and you key up and then an RPO actually answers. It's like, we're, so less mistakes, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So we're in a room with just, it's like a bank of like our Tracon. It's just a wall yeah. of scopes and there's, you know, people at each scope and you're all working the problem. And then I think on the other side of the wall is just a mirror of that room and it's just RPOs like typing and stuff. And they so. control all the. Yep. Um, so blips yeah. on the radar screen, move them wherever you wanted to move. Yeah, they just put in commands. Like if I turn a guy in to send them, they'll put the altitude and the heading and stuff. Okay. And yeah. And then if anything goes wrong, they just, a lot of times the instructor is just like, Hey, delete him. And then just to, Poof, he's gone out of the, oh, really? out of the problem. Because <laughs> there's a couple times where like, I mean, if a plane starts doing some wild stuff and you have this whole like plan, mm -hmm. which I mean, it, it's kind of real life because people do goofy stuff. But like, no, if the computer just like starts making 360s on final, it's kind of like, well, what do we do here? So yeah. they just, the instructor just deletes it because they want to, they want you to just keep working. Yeah, because nobody really does a 360 on final. I mean, <laughs> not, without a, not without a pilot deviation. Yeah. After that, you got done with the... Did you have any trouble getting through? I mean, it all went well, I guess. So we had 17 people in our class and passed 10 people. So seven people didn't make and I got 10th. Oh. So, yeah. <laughs> you were last in your class. I mean, I, you know, I made over <laughs> seven people. So last in the class would be 17. <laughs> okay. No. Um, so, yeah, that was humbling. But well, I did not care. I was just excited to make it. Yeah. It's actually kind of fun. So we had that list of places where like they send you. So we all go into a room on placement day and it's like the NFL draft. Like, so the girl who got first, she goes up there and they have it all on a whiteboard and she just circles the one she wants. Okay. And then they, they X through it. And then, so I go up there and... <laughs> They made a show of it because I went last. So, like, no. there's only Lafayette left. And I go up there. Nobody wanted to come to Lafayette. <laughs> it, it was pretty low. Yeah. Um, it was pretty much the last two, I think I remember, were Dayton, Ohio, and Lafayette. Because, yeah, I thought I was going to go to Dayton until the day of because we had a weekend between. So, we passed on Friday. We had all weekend to celebrate and, you know, like, talk about, like, where are you going? Where are you going? Yeah. She's taking this place. You're taking that. So, like, you're, you're just trying to figure out where you're going to go. And 
Dayton kept falling to me because no one wanted to go to Dayton, Ohio. So yeah. I was like Googling Dayton, Ohio. I was like, where is this place? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the first thing that came up was like, it was either the meth or heroin capital of the Midwest. <laughs> and uh, yeah, not super excited about that. I was talking to my parents. And they're like, oh God. And then um, like, I didn't even think I was coming to Lafayette at all. Yeah. I had written that one off. And then uh, weekends over, day of placement, guy takes date. And I'm like, oh, okay. Okay. That works. I wonder where I'm going. Yeah. So he thought about it over the weekend. And then, yeah, I got Lafayette and then pretty much you, you work a half day. You literally go in that morning, you pick, and then you go home, you pack up all your stuff and you're on the road. So you got to be ready to go right away. They gave us two days to get to Lafayette. So we placed on a Tuesday because it was like Columbus day. So we had a long weekend, came back Tuesday, placed, and then I'm driving, well, to Arkansas to visit my family, but pretty much on the road to Louisiana Tuesday afternoon. And they tell you that ahead of time, I hope, know. like, so you have the weekend to kind of get your stuff ready yep. and. Yeah. So, yeah, we all kind of knew we were leaving right after placement. I don't know why Lafayette was so low because like... People don't know about us down here. They yeah. don't know about Lafayette. I mean, like I had never been to Louisiana before. Yeah. I had probably heard of Lafayette maybe, but like I didn't know anything yeah. about it. It was like New Orleans and Shreveport are like the only two Louisiana places I knew. Yeah. Have you ever heard of Horseheads, New York? No, exactly. I can't say. <laughs> we sent two people there. It's Elmira Tower and two people that went first overall and like third overall. And uh, so two people went there and then there was Erie, Pennsylvania, Dayton, Ohio. It wasn't Boise, but it was somewhere in the Northwest because there's a guy who was from Washington State and he wanted to be in Northwest. So he took that one. He's at Boise now. There was two Columbus, Georgias. And then I can't remember the rest. But yeah, Lafayette. Oh, uh, Aurora, which is next to Chicago. It's the little like satellite oh, airport. I've, been to, I've flown yeah. in there before. Yeah. So I didn't ever think I was going to get Lafayette because it was like being mocked like pretty high. Like yeah. people were going to take it. And then like the instructors there would always give us advice that you want a radar ticket or like you want to get certified in radar. So like go to an up down, get your tower, get That's your radar. What Nick was saying it's too, yeah. easier to move, which was the biggest lie anyone's ever told um, because it's <laughs> not easier to move. It's actually harder to move. So like all these people who went to like Dayton, Ohio, um, you know, Erie, Pennsylvania, just towers only. They're all in like their second and third facilities now. I think I'm really? one of like two people who are still at the first facility they went to. One guy's on his third facility. I mean, that makes sense. The up down thing. If you want to go to radar, then yeah. it makes sense. But no, everywhere is willing to train you. So you don't even need the experience. Oh, okay. So like uh, actually the guy who went to Erie, he went to like, I think like another tower only. And now he's at Cleveland Center. So like wow, only amazing. tower experience, he transfers to Cleveland Center. Like he's going to have to start training like all new, like, you know, brand new eyes, everything. But yeah, they don't care. Yeah. They'll train him anyways. He's just like, they're just going to treat him like he came from the academy. Okay. So yeah, he's doing good. And then <laughs> definitely not jealous. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, what, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> definitely didn't delete him from social media because he kept posting all. He's not my friend anymore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so Lafayette, which I'm happy with. I mean- I would obviously like to go somewhere in the future else, but yeah. as far as like first places, like it's been great. So you had two days to get down here. Yeah. Well, they give you like eight days of change of station leave, which you can use for like moving, apartment hunting and stuff. I took all eight of those, like the first before I even showed up. Okay. So like they give you two days and then I took eight days of leave. So like I, I hung out at home with my parents for a little bit and then we, we packed everything up and then I drove straight down south to Lafayette. Lafayette. Yep. So you said six years you've been here? Uh, six and a half, October of 2017. You didn't get here like Nick did uh, right when COVID started and no, all that. I've actually seen, I worked both runways, the parallels. Oh, and really? I'm a veteran of Lafayette. Cool. Yeah. Never That's worked a the long crossing. Time. Yeah, I know. Never worked the crossing runway. That closed right before we got here. But yeah, the parallels, I think I, I certified through Tower with the parallels, which was super useful for pattern traffic and everything. And then went to RTF for a month. And while I was there, they closed. Four uh -oh. left, two, two, right. And then I came back and I only trained in radar with a single runway. I remember they had it closed um, for a while and then they opened it. And that's probably when you came. Mm -hmm. And then they closed it again. Yeah. And it, it's been closed ever since for so six years, I guess. Yeah. I know 1129, it's probably been about 10 years. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. there's like probably three people at Lafayette who've worked one one two niner yeah. like we're, we're gonna they already have a setup we got a simulator and like we're, we got to do classroom for crossing intersection departure and like arrivals and stuff because like no one's ever done it yeah so we're definitely we all have to get a briefing and stuff then we'll just go with it <laughs> see how this works out yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So once you got down here, I guess you had to get trained here locally because yep. they. So pretty much you start, uh, you get here, they do all your onboarding, you do a bunch of, uh, they're called like 
electronic learning modules, ELMS. And it's all, all just on a computer. Yeah, just watching that's what you're slides doing for or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. It's just too much information. Uh, you're not really learning anything. Go into classroom and it's kind of broken up. You do like flight data, clearance, delivery and ground together. Mm-hmm. So you do a little ground school. You're like moving little smaller prop planes than this. Oh. The propellers actually spin. And uh, oh, you're just I- moving around like a... Like we have this airport map with, you know. I think I've seen that. And you just move them around. You pretend taxiing and like runway 22 left taxi via Bravo Juliet, blah, blah, blah. And so you do that and then you go upstairs. That's just learning, I guess, learning all the taxiways, which way to get. Because here's where signature is. This is is brand new to you. Yeah. Everything. So it's a little bit easier if you're just, you know, you can see where the planes are going. And then you go upstairs and you, you monitor for like five hours. It's called like familiarization time. And then you plug in with your trainer. And you start talking. Yeah. And then you do that again for local, which is tower. And then you do it again for radar. Okay. And there's certain hour requirements for each position and everything. So you did all that. But then when you started radar, you said you went back up to Oklahoma City? Yeah. So since none of us are like, we hadn't got schooling for radar because we all just went for the tower class. Yeah. They require you to go back and take radar school. Okay. So it's just like for approaches and departures, you're just working a fake airport with, I think like three satellite airports like one military airport and then two satellites and then the big airport. And yeah, you're just working arrivals and departures pretty much. Yeah. And it's condensed into a month. You do like a week of classroom and then three weeks of Sims and it's pass pass. Like you don't fail or anything. And then you come back and yeah, start radar training here. And so you monitored that whole time while you're doing radar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think like radar, you got to monitor for like nine hours. Okay. And then after the nine hours, you can start actually talking and so when you got here, well, Chris was still here when you got here. Yes. 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 He Chris was the Clark. manager. Yep. Great first person to talk to. So I called him because you're supposed to like check in with your yeah. uh, new ATM. I talked to him. He was he's just a happy guy and love yeah. it. So that was a good first impression. Then you get here. And did you know Ricky Pack? Yeah. Yep. And yeah, he bowled I with mean, him. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and apparently you were there too. I was there too. <laughs> <laughs> we have met each other before. Yes, we have. <laughs> so uh, Ricky Pack, like the, the classroom teacher, he's the staff support guy because okay. he... Retired at 56 and I uh, went downstairs to do all the classroom stuff. So, so, like, that's another, like, great first impression of, like, oh, shit, Lafayette's going to be fun yeah. type thing. Yeah. So, that was good. My favorite Chris Clark story is, uh, like, 2018 or 2019, we had this, like, minor hurricane. Uh, it, yeah. it was supposed to be really bad. Then it hit the coast and it just, you know, kind of dissipated. But they had to spend the night the night before. And we have this little closet of, like, emergency supplies, flashlights, food and everything. So, they just give us, like, air mattresses and sleeping bags and MREs and stuff. Oh, really? <laughs> Surprisingly not expired. And uh, so we're all just laying there. We got to be up at 5 a.m. to open the tower. And uh, so like 10 o'clock, we're all winding down. There's like five of us that they had stay overnight. Mm -hmm. And then like I'm sleeping in the like middle. It's like an office. So because like there's no bedrooms in the tower. So you just find a spot. And then uh, the light turns on. I'm like, oh, God. Like what? (laughs) Like just (laughs) shocked awake. Yeah. It's Chris Clark standing there with board games and like chips and salsa and stuff. He's like, (laughs) he's like, oh, we're going to make a night of it. Like, you know, like hang out. Exactly. exactly. It's like I felt bad for you guys. So I brought board games and, you know, like food and stuff. And I'm like, Chris, if you showed up like an hour ago, I've been so down. I've been sleeping for like 30 minutes. Like I don't want to get up. So I felt bad, but that was super nice. No, I do remember when I called him. It was because, you know, I got 10th out of 17th, which yeah. is passing. I remember saying like, hey, my name's Patrick Boy. I was assigned to Lafayette. Not like I chose Lafayette or like, you know, I'm excited to come to Lafayette. I was like, yeah, I got assigned Lafayette. Yeah, it's like, what oh, did that he was say? poor choice. <laughs> He's like, that's odd phrasing. <laughs> 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 you know, we placed on Tuesday. He's like, all right, two travel days. You'll be here Friday. I was like, ooh, that was really the only coaching up they did. There was like, you're entitled to change station. You should change your station. So I was like, I'm going to play hardball with Chris Clark. So he's like, you're going to be here Friday, right? Two travel days. And I'm like, yeah. oh, I was, uh, I want to take my change station leave. He's like, how much? Like a day? And I'm like, I want to take all eight. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so I showed up halfway through the next week. But yeah, that was worth it. Got to do apartment hunting stuff. Like we came down here, stayed in a hotel, me and my parents. And then we went a full day of just apartment hunting and everything. Cause yeah, they expect you to like, get here in two days and then you have nowhere to live like, oh so then you i mean you what gotta live in a hotel or something yeah pretty I mean, much that's what really we were have... doing for a couple of days i found my apartment they're like yeah give us like three days to do the uh background check and everything and i was like 
I think I tried to pull like the the government employee thing. I was like, hey, I just went through a, like a major background check to get this job. Like I'm a you know federal employee. Can you just like trust me? And they're like, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was I was trying to explain my situation. I was like, I just got here like two days ago. Like I need somewhere to like at least store my stuff. Like something. They're like. Well, let's see what we, and they called and they just, they moved me to the front of the line for like the background check. So I think it took like one day instead of three. And then, so I got to move in the next day and they're actually nice. They gave me a little storage room to, cause we used my parents' car and my car. And then obviously my parents left. So I had like too much stuff for my car. Yeah. So I had to, it's, it's a crazy process. They just like, yep, you're going to Oklahoma City for the Academy. Oh, you passed. Okay. Here you go. You get two days to get to Louisiana. Yeah, they don't give you much time to no. do anything else. Yep. To, to hunt for an apartment or whatever nope so change of station is kind of what that's used for yeah so I just, oh instead you went you went to hang out at home i mean <laughs> it was on the way oklahoma <laughs> city way. to oh, arkansas okay. oh, to louisiana okay. yeah so where your parents live uh fayetteville arkansas okay yep they retired there because we were all in tulsa and then they retired to fayetteville it's a nice area i like uh better Northwest than tulsa arkansas. yeah better than tulsa <laughs> Northwest Arkansas is kind of hilly. Yeah, Northwest, and, Northwest you know. Arkansas is beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they like it there. It's kind of like I always compare it to Lafayette. It's like a little festival town. Like there's oh, always yeah. something going on on the weekends. It's they have some festival, live music and stuff. But yeah, visit a couple times a year. So are you excited about uh, 1129 opening? <laughs> <laughs> the rumor is that... <laughs> Yeah, I'm excited to no longer hear the jokes when uh, I give the win. Like, runway four right cleared to land, wind one three zero one zero gust three zero, and be yeah. like, oh, I wish we had a runway. <laughs> yeah. Like, me too, buddy. Me too. <laughs> me too. That'll be exciting. And they open that up, especially for us because we're right here. We can use yeah. one one, you know. You're right there. Air Med's right there. Yeah. I mean, Avionics Solutions, they don't really have planes, but Air Med will be really happy about it. Yeah. yeah. And like for us, it'll be nice to do crosswind takeoffs if we're practicing that or landings, you know. I mean, if the wind's not too crazy, yeah, we'll we'll be able to. I mean, we get plenty of practice on two two left and four right. A lot of times, like during the spring, it seems like it's always a crosswind. It's a crosswind, always, yeah, yeah. always. Yeah, no, I am excited. <laughs> One because it is the more runways you have, the more options you have. Because the worst thing is when a guy lands or departs like four right, two two left, and unfortunately they have a an issue or something. Yeah. Like I cleared a guy for takeoff on four right, he gets on the runway and he loses steering in his gear or something. So he's got to sit on the runway. Oh and, yeah. And so like I have to call radar. I'm like, Hey, there's a guy on the runway. It's closed. And so they're like just holding people. And so like now with multiple runways, we'll hopefully just be able to direct those people to a new runway. Yeah. Because as long as he's not like sitting in the intersection of one, one, two, nine or like two, two left, we yeah. can still use that runway. So that would be super helpful because right now we're single operation. It just shuts down the entire airport. Yeah. Anytime anyone has an issue. And so that will be helpful. It'll be helpful for all the people who are, you know, taxiing two miles to the approach into That's two right. left. <laughs> yeah. Well, now that we have Bravo, it's a lot better. I it always, is. It is a lot nicer. Bravo, Charlie, one, one, Juliet. Yeah. That was annoying. All our students have a hard time with that. Yeah. You know, that taxi. Not, it's nice to have uh, Bravo, Juliet. Yep. Easy. Easy. One crossing, no hold yep. shorts. Uh, were you here when they had the PPR for one, one, two, nine, or you had to call to get on it? Oh, I do remember that. I don't remember. Because Bravo was closed and 1129er was PPR. So private hangar and Foxtrot was closed. So like the private hangers, every now and then a person would forget to get, because I think PPR is like prior. You got to call. Yeah, it. it's yeah. like you got to call and get authorization because they <coughs> yeah. would get the minute equipment off 1129er. They'd do a FOD check and then they'd open it up for you for like the five minutes that it takes you to taxi. <laughs> yeah. But like private hangar guys would forget to call. Or they just didn't know about it. And so, like, they would call ready to taxi, and you're like, uh... Yeah. <laughs> the airport's still out there. Like, yeah. we can't taxi on there. And then the airport would get mad because we'd call and be like, hey, we got an aircraft who wants a taxi. Can you get off the runway? Yeah. Like, it'd take them, like, 10 minutes to get all the equipment off and, like, do the fly check and everything. So, private hangar's mad. The airport's <laughs> mad. So Everybody's glad, mad. Exactly. Yeah. We're mad. Yeah. Because um, it falls on us. And yeah. Then, so, I'm glad it's it's all open. And Yeah, it'll be nice. I... I I kind of vaguely remember that. I don't know who I was working for, if it was Acadian or... Yeah, I think I was it was before at, Owens. Yeah. But... Yeah, it was before we got here. It'd be nice. It'd be nice if they opened four left, too. Two, two, right? Yeah. That was actually, like I said earlier, like I went through tower training and all that. And like, it's nice just to put you guys, like flight schools, yeah. in the left closed track. Like if we're on two or four left, you just do left closed track. We can do anything we want on four right wing launch. 
uh, you know, departures, arrivals, anything. Yeah. And then opposite on two, two, right. You're just always, unfortunately, you're always going to be in the city side of the, uh, tower pattern. You're not going to yeah. go over the swamp anymore. Yeah, Cause they built that cargo ramp and you've got the, the lights there. And so when you're coming in to land on four left and you're following the Vassy, but it gets a little close to those lights and you're like, uh, I think I'm not going to hit those. <laughs> it's actually really hard to tell out the window if you're lined up for four right or four left. You can't really tell until like you're barely crossing, not, you're kind of outside of the highway, but it's like mile and a half final. Yeah. And so we're sitting there and it's just like, I think he's lined up for a four left. <laughs> I think and he's every, on the right yeah. runway. And every now and then I've had to send a guy around because he was cleared to land four right and he was lined up for four left. Yeah. And he was too big to land on four left. Like usually it'd be like, hey, you know, you you lined up for four left, runway four left, cleared to land if you want it. Yeah. And that way they don't have to like panic or anything. Yeah. I think like King Airs and Pilatuses could take like four left too, too, right? This guy was just a little bit too big. So you've been here since 2017. And so what, what are your plans down the road? Like what do you want to try to do? Um... Just go to a bigger facility, you yeah. know, one for money, two for, you know, that's kind of work the, more planes. That's yeah. Well, that's kind of the plan for most people here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest. I want to do the least amount of work and make the most amount of money. Yeah, so that's everybody. Yeah. exactly mm -hmm. like I'm not like Nick is like, he wants to push 10. He wants to yeah. like, he wants to sit down for an hour and never stop talking. Yeah. Like he, he wants to work. I enjoy that. But like, nah. So to move somewhere, I mean, I guess they got to have an opening. Yep. So, oh, you got another hour. I can go through the entire ER <laughs> process. It's pretty much, I describe it all like friends and family. It's a lottery. Yeah. It's pretty much, we have to have the right amount of people to release and the place you're going has to have not a hundred percent. So they have to have an opening and then you're fighting against all your coworkers and friends oh, okay. to get out. So like just uh, in February, we did one and we could release one person, but you know, 10 people want out. Yeah. So like, it's kind of like an unspoken kind of like, I'm happy for <laughs> Fight you. Fight to the death. It's, a, it's like, I'm happy that you also want to leave, but I hope it's me yeah, type thing. Yeah, that's right. Pick me, pick me. So like none of us were picked. Uh, it was Ryan Hill is yeah. going to Atlanta. And so like, it's like the day of, they release it like Christmas morning. You wake up, they release the list of like all around the country. You know, every, there's like 80 people who move every quarter. Okay. And like you're scrolling down Lafayette and it says, you know, his name's Michael, but Michael Hill. And I'm just like, in like split second, I'm like, damn it and then <laughs> like you know five seconds later you're like oh good for him yeah like, yeah he got one. i told him that too i was like yeah i'm happy for you but i wasn't for like the first five <laughs> seconds because like I mean, we all do want it to be our name yeah but no it's good to see people go on and do bigger and better things let's say i want to go to like i have paperwork into dallas fort worth so i find the hr person for the dallas fort worth area i send them this whole packet of like my signature, my manager's signature and all this. And then like, so you, you fax that. You don't get a confirmation. They don't email you or anything. Yeah. Like you get the fax confirmation sheet. It says like it went through, but no one reaches out to you to like say like, hey, we got your email or something. Yeah. Like some HR people do. There's like, you know, like 12 different regions. And then they're only <laughs> in there for 15 months. So you can't even be like, all right, it's a year from now. I'll just do this yearly. You got to do 15 months. Yeah. And then they drop out and you got to re-put them in. And then they rank it to like New York, center in New York trade kind of like one and two. And so like the places that need the most people, they pick first and it's kind of like the draft again. Yeah. So like New York has, they submit their list, they rank all their applicants and then they start picking based on that. And then it goes down to like New York picks, New York picks, Atlanta picks, you know, like blah, 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 blah. And then it gets down to the facility you want to go to, but you got to be like high on their list. Cause let's say I put in for Dallas Fort Worth, there's probably like 30, 40, 50 other people who want to go there. Yeah. Where am I on that list? If I'm not number one, they're not picking me round one. And so your odds go down that someone else is going to get picked up. Um, it's a it's a whole process. There are some people in this tower that want to stay, huh? Yeah, I mean, there's people who want to stay. Like, I'm content here. I like it yeah. here. Like, I mean, I'm not like disgruntled. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, there's I worse just, places to be. I like my coworkers. I like the city. I like the people I've talked to right now. Is they've all? It's it's a step to somewhere else. Yeah. It's so, but I know there's probably some people in there that are like, I'm good. I don't need to go nowhere. Hate to say the older guys, but they are older than me. So like you know, like Greg, Chris Breland, uh, Jacob Mono, all them, like yeah. they're they're pretty much they're here to stay. Yeah. I mean, they have families here. They grew up around here, type yeah. thing. And then you got um, kind of the, on the younger side, Preston's from Baton Rouge, so he's probably going to stay around yeah. this area and stuff. So I think, yeah. And then like Caitlin married a Cajun guy, yeah. so like she oh. might be kind of. She's going to be hanging out yeah. here. And like stay. her family's from Houston. So like it's close. Yeah. So like maybe she'll make the jump to Houston later on, but I think she's pretty Happy content here. staying yeah. here. So yeah. 
We're going to try to get her on here too. Yeah. yeah. Shout out Caitlin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean, there are people who want to stay and then a lot of people, it's their first facility like mine. And so yeah. like you kind of want to go somewhere else. Yeah. Just one for money and two like- Well, experience too. Experience I mean. too. Like I want to go to a big tower and like, you know, talk to like an actual United Delta American, not the sub carriers, yeah. commute air and envoy and stuff. So that'd be fun. But yeah, I think I'm more going the tower route too. Like Nick wants to go to Cleveland Center and stuff. So like you kind of figure out like if you, which one you enjoy more. And I think I enjoy tower more than radar. Yeah. So I think most of my paperwork is in for towers. I got a few places that are up downs, like just higher level up downs. And then I have paperwork into I-90. So that would be the only like radar place. But and tower people use different terms than pilots. So like they call tower local, mm -hmm. which is and, why I said tower early because yeah, I, I, I realized that. <laughs> um, yeah, because we call it local, and then but no one calls us local. Like when you call up ready for takeoff, or when we talk to you, we call ourselves Lafayette Tower. Yeah, it's just internally it's called local control. Like Tracon for a while, I didn't know what Tracon meant. But Do you know that, what it means now? <laughs> <laughs> Terminal radar approach control. Yeah. Tracon. Okay. So I didn't know what all the words mean, but I know it's like the tower with yeah. the radar. So you just put your name into where you want to go. You can list multiple places. You don't have to just pick one. Yeah, I think I have like 17 places. Okay. I'm, I'm going the shotgun, throw a large yeah. net approach. Because like my family isn't in Oklahoma anymore. And so like there's no ties to go back there. So like it's just wherever I felt like I wanted to go. And I, I, I thought about it like one night. I was like, what do you want in like a new city? I was like... I want a professional sports team, either basketball or football, and a good music scene. Places that like bands actually go for concerts and stuff. Yeah. So I don't have to like drive to Baton Rouge, New Orleans, and stuff. So like a place where they actually show up. And so I just kind of threw it like I was running like Portland, Seattle, Phoenix, Salt Lake City, Denver, Houston, Houston Hobby, Dallas, Dallas Love, Kansas City, Charlotte, Cincinnati. I think are the ones. And then that's the big cities. Yep. So I think those are the, yeah, and almost all of them. Plenty of traffic and you yeah. So be, be happy career wise yeah. and be happy, you know, <laughs> lifestyle wise. But I don't know. Like I don't know anything about. Like I've been to like Portland, Seattle, and Salt Lake and Phoenix. But there's a couple places on there that I've never been. Like Charlotte. Yeah. yeah. Like I've flown through Charlotte, but I've never like been to Charlotte. But I know Charlotte's a nice city. Like I'd probably be all right there. So like yeah, a lot of it's just like like I said, shotgun large net approach like just hope that i get picked up type thing yeah so they're not gonna make like lafayette understaffed they gotta you gotta wait until yeah they, they have, have a minimum staff i guess that they, yeah, they got have. the minimum staff in and they have like the what they want so like their their staff now like i think ours is 22 we currently have 17 certified okay. controllers and three trainees so that would put us at 20 yeah so i think once we get to 19 certified controllers we can let someone go because you can let someone go if you're at 85% or above your staffing number, which I think 18 works out to be like 84% or something. So you have to hit 19. So every okay. time we hit 19, everyone's doing their paperwork and getting it in, <laughs> make sure and it's like up to date yeah. just because we know like this is the one. Yeah. Yeah. So 22 is our number. I don't think we'll ever get to 22 just because. Just because people rotate. Yeah, yeah. And as they should. And then we get a steady you know, batch of trainees. We just got two new ones in March, I think. Is and the so, system as a whole, are they still understaffed trying to find people yeah. and stuff? Luckily, you know, Lafayette, I mean, you got like Caitlin and Nick are on six day work weeks and stuff, but two people had a baby. So yeah. like usually when you have a coworker has a baby, it's only one coworker, you know, Jake and Alex had a yeah. baby. So we're down two coworkers, which is totally yeah. fine. And I'm not talking trash on the Rosses. I'm just no. saying when you lose two controllers, oh, yeah. you know, you, you got to have people fill a gap. So no, we, we have, we love the Rosses. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, we're having another controller who's having a, a baby in June. So. Okay. We're just kind of, you just got to fill the gaps. I think because of that, we're on six day work weeks, but usually like we wouldn't be working a ton of overtime if like we had everyone in the building. Normally you get two days off mm -hmm. out of your yeah. week, work week. Yeah. But like other places, yeah, they're like pretty poor staffing. Okay. But I think they're trying to fix that. Hopefully yeah. we're like a, a training facility. We get people straight from the academy yeah. and stuff. So like first facility, it's almost everyone's first facility and unless you count like the military, but like their first FAA facility. And so we're just, we're here to train and here to help people move on, I guess. The funny story, petroleum at the base of our tower, they do like maintenance and ops there, mainly maintenance now. They call for radio checks every now and then. So I'm working out, I'm like, you know, Lafayette Tower, petroleum 111, radio check, petroleum 111, loud and clear, how me? Oh, got you loud and clear, thanks. He doesn't unkey, hot mics. 
and I just hear he turns on music and it's like Bruno Mars's grenade. <laughs> like it's like and it's playing and like I turn it on speaker so everyone can hear it, but like when you're you know hot mics like yeah. we can't talk so like no one knows yeah you're just listening so like everyone for like a solid three minutes just gets some like bruno mars on tower <laughs> Free. and so we're trying to like scramble find the petroleum phone number so we're calling and, and the lady answers and like hey weird thing this is lafayette control tower uh you have like a stuck mic on one of your helicopters out there doing it and it's playing bruno mars right now and she's like oh no oh, and no. you just see so like maybe like 20 <laughs> seconds goes by you see a door fly open and someone's <laughs> full sprint <laughs> over to these helicopters like just the fastest that person's probably run in a long time and just like and then all of a sudden the bruno mars comes off uh. <laughs> it's like, it's like, dang we didn't even get to finish the song yeah but that was that was a good one yeah y'all can hear us talking to the student whenever we're flying around yeah in the background yeah, yeah. like if uh i know you probably guys go over taxi instructions when you land and then we taxi them and they yeah. key up and you're like you know taxi via Bravo. Yeah. It's like bravo. And it's like, I mean, you can probably hear that with us too sometimes, yeah, too, sometimes especially yeah. with us now training. Uh, yeah. Um, like, <laughs> it is. Just the other day, my trainee, uh, he's in ground control and clearance delivery right now. Uh, you know, you clear IFRs to an airport, you tell VFRs, maintain VFR at a below 4,000. And like someone was going VFR to like Alexandria or something. He goes, clear to Alexandria. I go, no. Just in the background. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, no. It's better than over keen. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's kind of over keen. Uh, yeah. I'm always curious what you guys can hear in the background because like laughter, like people I can shouting hear laughter stuff. sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Or on the ATIS, because like on the ATIS, sometimes I'll be cutting in someone like in the background screams a curse word or something. Yeah. It's like, I'm going to have to recut this now. Uh, I've done that in the plane. Yeah. Like I'll just, a student will be talking and I'll just say something. And yeah, we have usually uh, when there's a traffic call and yeah. we're like trying to land you know so i mean you've been on enough tours now you know like the tracon and tower split so to talk to each other we press a button and it goes hot in their ear so like there's no warning or anything i've caught people singing you know <laughs> stuff and like when you're singing you can't hear in your ears yeah. so like the guy just keeps going i'm like all right i'll call you i'll call you back <laughs> just wait <laughs> but yeah you got yeah. people in the middle of like curse words and stuff like there's one time i think the only time i've really been caught is some guy was doing something weird in my pattern this was years ago you weren't here yet but he was doing something weird and I go like, what the F are you doing? Yeah. And it's right when someone called up and it was just like, right when I said it <laughs> and like it boops in your ear, but you're still going to finish your sentence. So yeah. like you don't cut yourself off immediately. So they got all in. I think it was Caitlin. She goes, oh, okay. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> okay. I'm glad like I found something I enjoy. It's fulfilling. It's unique. It's uh, everyone says it's something new every day which is true because something new could happen every day a lot of it's you know the same things yeah. but it is something new every day and then uh yeah i like it i have a trainee right now who's you know he's learning everything for the first time and then so like i try to be empathetic towards i, I want to correct the trainee sometimes yeah i'm like no this doesn't sound like the right call <laughs> <laughs> we're plugged in there's two jacks one's instructor one's trainee and the instructor has override well, capability yeah sometimes you'll hear the instructor come over and, and correct the student and um like oh he did bad yeah. <laughs> luckily on ground and stuff like it's you have a lot of time to fix something yeah. so we don't over key a ton we'll just he'll say something wrong and then in the back you're like well what about like that guy? Because like North Ram, there's only one way in, one way out. Yeah. So if we're taxing someone in, we got to hold someone. And so if you give two taxi instructions, like, so what, what are you going to do here? Yeah. It's not like in tower or radar where you like, if you mess up, like I might have to overkey to like for safety. At ground, I mean, you can fix a ground situation pretty easily. I think there was a trainee that uh, wanted me to do a 360 on base. And Nick came over and said, no, you're, you're clear to land. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> and then part of it's like, we want the trainees to do their own thing. So like, we're trying not to overkey them. We'd rather be like, all right, so what was your thought process there? Yeah. And you're trying to get them to think. I'm a big fan of, you know, failure is the best teacher type yeah. thing. Because like, if it's more like you made the wrong choice, like in radar, you have like, say three planes and you decide to make the Cessna number one. Well, now yeah. you're going to work really hard for the next two, but you're going to learn from that a lot more. Because you're going to feel bad, hopefully. Yeah. And then you're going to learn a lot more than me just be like, no, make the Cessna number three. Yeah. It's like, yeah. I want you to see why it was the wrong choice. And we can't do that a lot because, you know, we got to be expeditious and we don't want to delay people. You can let it happen sometimes. And that's the same for us, too. Like, it's it's sometimes nice to uh, have y'all correct the student. <laughs> yep. Because y'all are the scary voice coming out of the radio. <laughs> Once they click the button, they just freeze up. Which and happens it, to us, too. Oh, like, yeah. 
it's called parroting you, but like i had my trainer say like say exactly this i key up and yeah. like i say it back to him perfectly i key up blank yeah and then i'm just sitting there we have that on our side too yeah they we will coach them on what to say they'll say it and then they hit the button and then it's just yep. it, nothing comes out that just makes garbled. sense it's just yeah it's just that didn't even sound like a sentence what you just said <laughs> random words well patrick we're happy to have you. Thank you. On the podcast. And you know my fee for if you want me to return. Yes. So. Yes. I'll slip you that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll mail that to you. I'm available for other podcasts as well. <laughs> um, Let's go to black. Flight sales. If you made it this far, you listened to the entire episode. And for that, we would just like to say thank you, and we hope you enjoyed it. We would also like to thank Patrick for coming on the show and sharing his story. If you have any questions about today's episode or suggestions for future episodes, just leave a comment or message us, and we'll do our best to answer. If you'd like to check out some fun aviation videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel at Owens Flight Training. Or if you'd like to get more information on becoming a safe, knowledgeable, and confident pilot, just head over to our website, owensflighttraining.com. 